Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. I've been doing some uh, recycling which makes a bit of a change from the uh, normal levels of pollution you get in this game. So what we've got here is a storehouse and this is from the AAI Containers and Warehouses mod which is something that uh, somebody in, in the uh, comments from a recent video recommended I should, I should add to give me a bit more um, flexibility should we say with my storage space so I thought yeah that seems like a good idea I've shoved, so I've shoved that in as well. So as you probably remember I've had various trains. When, when my train comes in here, some of the um, the wagons on it tend to uh, tend to be full of junk that I've picked up from various um, whatever projects I've been doing, whether that's whether that's rock or stone or just other stuff that's been in my inventory, and I've decided I wanted to get rid of it. And so I can chuck that, uh, and that's been all, all been just chucked in the back carriages on this train here. And then whenever it pulls into the station, it then gets unloaded into these. Um, in fact, that was in the wrong place. Put that there. Um, into these. Into these. Uh, crates here where um, and I've now put in these these belts and extra inserters to pull all of the junk out of the uh, the wagons and put it onto the belts and then it'll get and, and run it up here I've also got it getting rid of all the junk from these crates as well because the um, that was just somewhere where it was again it was building up and there was a lot of it and I need and I just wanted to get rid of it so what I've done here is I've had it all feeding up into this into this um, storehouse here and the reason I've put this in here is because it's in theory the, th the hope was it would be big enough to just take all of the stuff in because being as you can see physically bigger it's um it's what it's four by four so that's 16 times the size of one of these chests i was hoping that it'd be it would also have a lot more storage space and so i wouldn't need to worry about this but it turns out that despite being 16 times the size it's two it's got a storage to 250 available in it whereas this one goes up to 50. So the um, the individual chests are actually far more efficient methods of um, of storing stuff because they they fit in more per um, per square, if you will. Um, this this if this, this this one being 50, this should be 800, not 250, in order to fit the same amount in there. Which is, to be honest, is a bit of a disappointment. So I'm going to need to do something here. Let's use some of these red chests like that. And if I reprogram these to take wood instead, then I can take some of the pressure off this one. The other reason I wanted to use a larger chest, not so much for the um, for the extra storage capacity as I was hoping for, but also because it means there's more room around it for me to put these filter inserters. Because a filter inserter can only you can only whitelist one item, as far as I'm aware. Um, you might be able to do more with filter circuits. I haven't looked into that yet. But the but the point of this is that it um, then means I can pull out the relevant things from here. So we've got uranium, copper, iron, stone, coal, and vulcanite ores coming out, being dumped out onto the onto the belt here. And this belt runs from here, runs miles across the base, all the way over here, and goes into the back of this uh, in, of the um, ore mining facility. So that means any junk that I bring back from my um, from my travels can be shoved onto this belt. If it's compatible with it, at least it'll be shoved onto the belt here. It'll go through and it'll flow down into the stations here, where it'll get sorted out and and taken off to wherever in the base it's needed. So that's going to be much um, much neater and and saves me having and saves the bots having to carry it all around, which takes forever when, the, when there's lots of it. And yeah, generally this should, should work much better and stop those and mean those crates won't fill up. And I've got and I'll actually use the uh, resources from. Them. Now the sharp, the eagle-eyed among you will have noticed there's another belt coming down here and feeding into the back of it. And that is because I've been doing something slightly spacier up here. <clears throat> so, in space exploration, you obviously go and explore space. So for that, you need a spacesuit if you're going to actually go around poking around in in, uh, in deep space itself. And so one of the things I've built is down here. You can see I've got I'm using a thruster suit instead of the um, instead of the uh, what was it the uh, Power Armor Mark II I had before. And it has some similarities. It's got an inventory of uh, it's got a sorry a, a grid you can put various things into like um, exoskeletons and generators and so on but it's also air it's also um airtight so you don't need to worry about having to having the um you don't yeah you can use it in space however when you are using it in space it's airtight that's all very well but you still need a supply of oxygen and general stuff to keep you alive and that's what's going to be made here so on the right hand side here i've got this this machine here making the i can't remember what these containers are called making the uh, secure canisters then they're being converted by this machine here into the um, into life support canisters, and then this machine is actually filling them with with water and coal. Apparently, apparently that's what you need for a life support canister. Um, so, so this this now makes it makes it into something that will I can actually use to keep me alive. Now these things are fairly expensive, as you can see. There's a there's a hideous hideous spaghetti here because I wanted so many different ingredients for this, and 
some of them were available down here, so I brought them around. And just generally, yeah, it's a bit of a mess. Don't, uh, don't judge me. <clears throat> but as you can see, we've got um, steel, glass, heat shield tiles, copper, plastic, all going into making these things, and then blue circuits going into making them as well. So they're they're quite expensive. Fortunately, once they've been used up in the suit, you can then um, put them into into another one of these life support uh, finagling machines. Which are taking the brown ones, which are, I don't want to think about what the brown is, uh, and it'll wash them out using water basically, and then turn them back into clean ones that can be filled up by this machine and put back into circulation again. And so that's why I've got these two um, containers up here the uh, chests, the uh, provider chest and the requester chest. So, one, so the idea behind this is that this will fill up to about, I don't know, two, three hundred contain canisters. I haven't decided exactly what's a good number for this yet. But then they can be transported by logistics bot to me wherever I am on in, on the planet, uh, or as long as I'm within the logistics range network, or more likely transport them to the rocket that I'm about to leave the planet in. Then, when I come back, I can use the logistics trash slots, these things down here. In fact, I could set up an auto trash system with this, like this, and tell it that I never want to have any of these in my inventory. So don't bring me any, and always take them away. Take, take them away until I have zero left. Set that, and that's now in there. So now, any time I have any of these used used life support canisters in my inventory, the uh, as again as long as I'm in range of a robot port, the uh, logistics bots will snatch them away from me, take them up, and dump them into this chest here, where they'll be passed around again. Now, I you might have noticed I, again <laughs> the eagle-eyed among you, <laughs> there aren't actually any uh, life support canisters in this chest yet, and that's because I've made a bit of a mistake when I was building this. I forgot to put any sort of supply of water in here, so these are both trying to take water out of an empty pipe. Um, yeah, that was a bit of a screw up, but never mind. I'll um, I'll, I'll feed that out, and I'll, I'll feed the pipe out here at some point. Run it over here onto onto the onto the bus, and then the nearest water I discovered is way up north here. So I'll probably run it up, maybe to about to this wall, and then just go off sideways, so it's not quite so ridiculously long. <clears throat> water is something I don't have on the bus. Um, there is down here somewhere. I did put, put I put lube on the bus. But I never got around to actually adding water as well, so that's just something I'll, I'll need to need to add in there as well. Um, yeah, so that's that's making my life support canisters, and the reason this is relevant to the recycling is because when this um, assembly machine here is making the secure canisters, it also produces scrap from the, um, the stuff it's taking in, so it's it's not it it produces some rubbish as well that you need to deal with. So I've got this filter inserter here that's set to just just take scrap. So that's going to take that out of there uh, without dumping the containers that I actually the canisters that I actually want onto the onto the belt as well. Um, they'll get run down here across here. Yeah, I, I, I realised after after I'd placed this that if I'd um, if I'd gone one square lower and moved this electrical pole, I wouldn't have needed this um, S-shaped kink in there. But eh, never mind. So they'll be carried along here onto this onto this belt, which carries them all the way down here, miles and miles and miles and miles down, all the way down the side of the bus, to about all the way down to here where we saw earlier it joined onto this belt. Now the th thing about this is that yeah, the, um, the the scrap is not one of the things that can be sorted out by the uh, by the sorting facility. So on the way over here, there's a splitter here that's going to split off any scrap that's coming along here and pass it into this recycling facility. <laughs> yes, there's another stage in here. And that'll turn it into iron ore, copper ore, stone, and also, frustratingly, some heavy oil. Um, so that the, the solid ingredients from that get dumped onto this belt here, passed down here, and into the into the sorter where they'll get split out and passed onto the appropriate stations. That's That should all work quite nicely. And the for, the, for getting rid of the oil... Uh, where is it? Here it is. Here it is. I've dumped it. I've got another pipe running down here, and I've thrown in another station down here to, um, yeah, the, the water's full again. I don't care. Uh, to, to to catch the oil, and eventually I'll get around to building another station somewhere else to take it away. <laughs> <sighs> but it's another. Yeah, I thought better to have it doing working like this than to try and do this somewhere else, because at least this way it's one central place that I can chuck scrap and all of the ores and things from from this, and just get it all into one single set central recycling facility. There's a lot of wood coming up. I've picked up a lot of wood over this, <laughs> over this game. This is ridiculous. Okay, we'll leave that leave that running. Uh, let's see how much space we've got in here, actually. Okay, now, now I've pulled out four chests worth of wood. There's a decent amount of space in this in this uh, container, so it should carry... Uh, storehouse. So it should carry on going for a while. Okay, so that's um, that's the first step. Next thing I've done, so another part of the thruster suit is you get a jetpack with it, which is absolutely awesome. 
I can fly. Yeah. There's a certain amount of um, momentum on this, so it's a little unwieldy. But once you actually get moving in a straight line and going, yeah, going in one direction, it's actually pretty quick. This is about the same speed as running with two exoskeletons on, st on um, stone, on stone bricks. So, yeah, it's pretty quick. And you can fly over absolutely everything with it as well. Um, and that includes water. Um, biters sometimes get confused and lose track if you, if you, if you when you take flight. So, yeah, it's great for getting away when you're in trouble as well. <laughs> uh, smoke comes out of it, but well, yeah, never mind. Now, the slight downside of that is it does use up this rocket fuel as I'm, as I'm flying around with it. Uh, last time I looked, I had, four, I had five in, 15 in this, um, of these available. Uh, that's gone down a bit. But, you know, it's, it's worth it to be able to fly around. <laughs> much and more, much easier than, than walking, especially in sort of difficult terrain where there's cliff faces. Or just even when it's this sort of terrain and you're moving around a bit more slowly, it's a lot, a lot easier and quicker to fly. <clears throat> so, let's see, what else have I been up to? Now I'm going to um, I'm going to tease you a bit because um, I know any, anyone who's seen the um, the previous video, the the, the summary of uh, series one, is going to know that I have built a cargo rocket, but I shall talk about that in a moment. I've also finished off building this um, my defensive wall, or all the way around this end of the base now. So I've I've captured this uranium patch now. So I need to go down and stick a mine in there, which is going to require a sulfuric acid drop off and a, a uranium pickup station. Uh, so yeah, we now have an actual wall going all the way around the entire base this is um which is rather nice it mean, make, means i feel a little bit safer at some point if i can be bothered and i'm not sure whether i can i might go around and pull up some of these walls that are going around all of these these bases because because they're not necessary anymore everything's protected um reasonably protected anyway I, i'm occasionally losing um <laughs> losing turrets along the bottom the bottom row here and along the top but i've talked about that Okay, let's go and talk about the talk about the cargo rocket now, because that's 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 the really exciting thing on this um, this particular uh, episode. Okay, here we go, my shiny new cargo rocket and all its attendant um, construction machines. <laughs> oh, there's a lot a lot of stuff went into this. <laughs> Goodness. Okay, so the rocket itself, as you can see, is um, a bit bigger and a bit more pointy and a bit more. A bit, just a bit more than the uh, traditional satellite rocket which I've got down here, and that works. I mean, it works. It's been launching my satellites, and they've been doing doing my research. Well, let's, look, let's launch another one just for the fun of it. Um, yeah, it works nicely. It's been it's been taking satellites up and discovering new planets, which is just just what you want from a, um, from a satellite rocket. But the cargo rocket does a bit more than that. The cargo rocket can be used to actually take me to other planets, or to to orbit, or to to, to wherever I want, really. Oh, I've discovered a, another another moon. Um, so this this, but, but uh, in in exchange for that, it's it's rather a lot more complex. <laughs> so the original, um, the normal satellite rocket facility, as you probably remember from Vanilla or from previous episodes, if you've been watching them, <laughs> uh, you you feed feed in things like rocket fuel and low lower density structures. Well, basically, most of this stuff just gets fed straight in here, and it'll make all of the. Um, the rocket parts for you. This one you have to make them separately. Uh, so I've got a machine here that's making the uh, rocket parts, and this is similar. It's taking in heat shielding, low density structures, rocket control units, I'm sure. Uh, but you also need cargo pods and rocket fuel tanks, which I'll get onto in a moment. The other thing is, if you just leave it putting them in constantly, then you'll end up filling up the inventory. Because yeah, a cargo rocket has an inventory as well, which means is what you use to take take your stuff with you when you go off to another planet. Um, and so if if you're not careful. It'll just carry on loading it up until you've got all kinds of things you don't want in there as well. Especially as these things, you need... Uh, right, so when you get somewhere, you need to have in your rocket, I reckon I want... If, I, if I'm going to go somewhere, I want to have enough stuff to get back home again. I don't want to leave myself stranded on some random other um, planet. Because <clears throat> whilst I suspect I probably could put together the, all of the... Um, everything I need to make myself another rocket and get back again... It might take me a while. I might need to build up, you know, a base that's capable of building a rocket. And I don't want to have to do that again if I can if I can possibly avoid it. At least not from scratch. This took me 85 hours. I don't want to go through all that again. So, uh, what I want to do is pack enough parts in to make another rocket and, and to launch the rocket as well. So what I'm going to need for that, and I'm, I'm going to need to make a shopping list just to make sure I don't forget anything because I'm bound to at this point, is I'm going to need a, a rocket silo to actually build the rocket. 
I'm going to need a fuel refinery to make this, make the rocket, uh, make the fuel for the rocket. I'm going to need a way of making the fuel for the rocket. But if I land on a vulcanite planet, that's not going to be too difficult. I'm going to be able to manage that without too much, too much problem. Uh, I'm going to want to take a landing pad with me as well, because that way, the next time I go out there, hopefully my rocket won't disintegrate on arrival, and I'll be able to rebuild it, and take it home, and, 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 and use it to fly back without the, without all the hassle and the cost of building a new one. <clears throat> but the thing is. It takes, as you can see here, it takes a hundred set cargo rocket sections to make a rocket, and they don't stack. And my cargo, my rocket has a cargo space of 500. So if I go in and I shove in all the parts to make a new rocket, that's 20% of my cargo space gone already. So I don't, fortunately, so I don't really want to do that. Fortunately, you can also use this recipe to, to pack the cargo rocket sections together, which means you take five of them and turn them into one single thing, and you get these sort of little sandwich jobs here. And you can, so those are significantly smaller you only need 20 of those uh, which I've got slightly more than I need now I should probably turn that off so it doesn't use all my resources up but yeah it'll it'll fill up soon so yeah I can whack 20 of these into my into my into my rockets cargo space and then I'll be able to take them with me <coughs> another thing you need is the capsule that goes on the top so I've got one I've got a spare one of those here and then there's the one on the top of the rocket here that um, that I, I go and sit in I I believe from what I've read um, going through the uh, through the manual here you can use if you're in a, if you're just in orbit, you can actually use this capsule to get back home again. So you can so my first if my, if, if my first trip, I plan to go into just into up into orbit, and I'm going to try and claim some of the stuff that's on that satellite I found up there, um, and do a few other things as well. So I'll just be able to use this pod to get back down again without without needing to build an entire new rocket, which which makes sense. I mean, getting back from orbit is is much much easier uh, you should, as as in real life, in fact. <laughs> um, and if we have, if we take a look at the um, Norvis orbit, we've got this satellite here that I want to investigate because there's all kinds of cool stuff in these boxes, and I want to, so I want to come up here and claim all of this and maybe maybe build up something bigger as well. I've had a bit of a look around. There's a few sort of rocks and meteorites. Meteor these meteorites are a bit more stable. They're not moving around quite so much or doing so much damage. I could claim a few of these. Um, I'm not sure. I don't, this is presumably a bit of land that I could potentially build on, and I think you, there's the possibility of building out. Um, what to call it? There's some sort of space platform, I think. Uh, let's see if I can. Yeah, this this thing here, space platform scaffold. So I could I could build these up. That's that's pretty cheap. I can build up quite a lot of that, which is probably a good thing because I'm going to need about as much of it as I use for land use landfill on ground on the ground. And this is good for a couple of reasons. Um, there's so there's yeah you can you can you can do things in space like um, uh, building things. And there's also quite a lot of science, I believe, the space science that has to be done in space. And I think there's a certain amount of manufacturing that also has to be done in space. So I want to get up there and get started on that sort of thing. Uh, how do I get back out of this view? There we go, like that. So I want to get up there, start playing around in space, start building up these things and, um, and try, trying new stuff. Uh, these are quite expensive as well, but I mean, it's just it's just lots and lots of components. What I have done down here, which is mildly interesting, is I've used circuit conditions. So I've got a red cable linked to the um, car uh, cargo rocket silo, and then going over to these three inserters. So this one is programmed to um, only put to only put a, um, a capsule in if there's fewer than one capsule in the rocket already. Um, I think that means I'm always going to end up with a spare in there, which is a slightly frustrating, but, but never mind. Uh, maybe that's what the one I'll be I'll be using to get back from space. I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll see how that goes. Then we've got this one over here is configured to only put the cargo rocket rocket sections in if there's fewer than 100. So that means it'll keep putting them in, putting them in, putting them in until the until there's enough in there to build the rocket, and then the rocket can build. And it won't. And after that, it won't put any more in because this still reports, even though the rocket is built, it still reports that there's 100 cargo sections um, and two pods. And interesting in there. <clears throat> I think the last icon means that the rocket is ready to go. And then finally, this one up here is sort of the opposite. This one is enabled when there's more than 19, more than 99 uh, rocket sections available. So when there's 100, and then and that so that one will then feed them off off to the packing machine up here. So they'll get put by as a priority. They'll get put into the um, into the rocket silo and built into a rocket because that's what we're going to want first. But once that's done, it'll then feed them off and be packed into into here. So that's yeah, that's going quite nicely. Another thing that I've uh, discovered, which I quite appreciated, is the amount of fuel you require in your rocket depends on where you're going to. You need a different amount of delta V to get to different planets. So uh, Norvis orbit is presumably the easiest one to get to. I'm going to low, low Norvis orbit. That's going to be, well, relatively easy as rocket launches go. So it only requires 50,000. 
If I change that to say, um, to go to Sakimi, suddenly I need 84,000. Let's not do that, because that's just going to use up a load more fuel. <laughs> um, I think I've just lost some. Eh, never mind. It's not too expensive. Yeah, so different different destinations require different amounts of fuel, which is quite nice and uh, um, and means that the further you're trying to go, the more expensive it's going to be. And presumably there's an upper limit on how far you can go with the cargo rocket before you have to start building bigger and better spaceships. <coughs> But that's all to come in the, in, the, in the distant, distant future. So, is that about everything? Yes, I think that's... Um, yeah, I think we're pretty much there now for this episode. Uh, I'm... I, I hesitate to call it cheating, but I've got... For these sort of things that are relatively low throughput, I am using the uh, logistics bots to bring these things up. And I don't... I actually don't feel at all guilty about that. I couldn't be bothered to build all of these things again on site. It just, just wasn't worth the hassle, if I'm being honest. So I thought, yeah, get the, get the bots to bring them. It's what they're there for. Was that a um, meteor attack? Y yes, it was. So this gives you an impression of how long it takes these guns to recharge. And this is why I've got five of them, rather than having one of them trying to shoot down multiple, uh, multiple asteroids, uh, meteorites. Okay. So, next episode, I'm hopefully going to be at least at least some steps closer to uh, launching this damn thing and having it and making sure I've got all of the stuff I need like uh, life support systems um, I'll make sure I record that because it's going to be um, exciting for hopefully for everybody <laughs> and I'll also spend some time trying to put together a shopping list of what I want to take with me and uh, make sure I've got all of the make sure I've got a probably several hundred maybe thousand um, pieces of the uh, space platform scaffolding stuff so I can actually build some build some, build out a bit up there when I get there and we'll go up and see see what we can plunder um, I also try and make sure I empty my own inventory to try and uh, make sure I've got as much space as possible to bring stuff back uh, oh I'm gonna need solar panels as well so I've got some power when I'm up there I don't think accumulators are required probably are going to be required because I suspect there's no day night cycle in fact if we look at the um yes yeah, so we look at Norvis itself we've got a day night cycle of seven minutes and 100% um, solar panel effectiveness. If we look at the orbit, there's no there's no mention of um, of the uh, what do we call it day night cycle. So I assume there's always going to be sunlight up there. And solar works five times as well. Bargain. I'll t uh, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> um, it's I don't know what a robot interference rate. Radi oh, radiation. Okay, that's how how like how likely robots are to explode and stuff. And yeah. So that's yeah, that's um, looking like a reasonably promising place to go, and hopefully start building up and, and thinking about some space science. I've been doing research into getting the space science up and running, so I think I've researched. I think I've, yes, there we go. I've researched space science labs now. In fact, let's search research rocket science packs while we're uh, while we're still on the ground, and, and we can. And these are easy because they're just ground-based researches. Ooh, that's nice. That could be very useful in space. Let's have that as well. <laughs> um, that's that's supposed to be a generator that just runs off rocket fuel rather than needing uh, needing water and other stuff as well. Yeah. Oh, it's less 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 efficient apparently, but um, but it will work. But you don't need water, so it'll work nicely in space. Um, okay. Good. Every, it looks like everything after this is going to start requiring rocket science. So uh, we'll have to see what that see how we go with that. Presumably, that means I'm going to start thinking about bringing large quantities of these science packs up with me to space as well because the presumably the the um yeah i'm going to need to use the space science um labs uh, but they're going to need all four of these <laughs> science packs so that's uh, something else i'm going to have to have a think about and and also going to have to work out how to make machine learning data and chemical gels oh well that's um that'll be it for a future episode i'm glad this i'm glad there's plenty more things for me to look into it uh, stops it getting boring <laughs> Right, okay, this has been a rather longer than normal episode, so I'm going to stop talking now and, uh, and um, call, yeah, call it an episode at this point. Uh, thank you for watching, if you are still watching, I hope you are, uh, because I think there's, I mean, I have waffled on a bit in this one, but I think there's been quite a lot of interesting stuff in here, lots, lots of stuff to talk about, so I hope you found it interesting as well. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time, when hopefully we'll be blasting off and leaving this rock behind to see what's drifting, up, drifting around up above it. <laughs> I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.